Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about a relatively new discovery of a really cool planet somewhere out there in our galaxy. Let's talk about K2229 and welcome to What The Math. So, as you may know from some of the previous videos, this right here is the infamous Kepler telescope. A telescope that discovered quite a lot of uh, exoplanets. Now, some of them are actually right there in this vicinity, and the shape that you see right here is formed because of the shape of the actual telescope. Uh, okay, it might not be visible here, but you have to zoom in and see the inside to discover that this is basically kind of what it looks like. Now, very recently, um, you may have also heard that Kepler-2 is running out of fuel and is basically about to finally end its mission for good. But that doesn't stop it from discovering more exoplanets. And today we're going to be talking about one such discovery. And this discovery is known as K2229b. Now, we're going to go and take a look at uh, the star code K2229. And K2 stands for K uh, part 2. So in other words, it's the second mission or second uh, part of the mission for Kepler, uh, Kepler telescope. So there are actually, as you can see, uh, two exoplanets here. One of them is right here. This is K229c. Uh, this is a Neptune-like uh, planet. And specifically here, it's, uh, it's known as a kind of a sub-Neptunian um, uh, mega-Earth. It's about 2.2 masses of Earth and it's much, much larger than Earth as well. Uh, but this would be a pretty hot planet. But we're talking about the other planet here, known as K2229b. Now, first of all, look at how close it actually orbits to its parent star. Uh, so if I accelerate speed here a little bit, you'll notice that it's moving really, really fast. As a matter of fact, it takes it about 14 hours to orbit once around its parent star. And the parent star is not a red dwarf, it's actually uh, an orange dwarf. In other words, it's just a little bit smaller than our own sun. Uh, this particular star is, I believe, is about 84 or 85% the mass of the sun and about 79% the radius of the sun. So it's actually very similar to our sun. But the distances between these two objects are very small. This is like 1% of an astronomical unit or basically... Um, one hundred one one hundredth of a distance between earth and the sun that's a lot closer than mercury is to the sun and so this planet is a scorchingly hot devilish like world this would this is so hot as a matter of fact that we are now considering this to be one of the hottest planets we've discovered but that's not it there's actually a lot of really interesting things about this particular planet one of them is that in terms of actual density, it's very, very dense. It's one of the most dense planet, exoplanets we've discovered. It's as dense as uh, Mercury, if not denser. Its density is currently estimated at about 8.9 grams per centimeter cube, which is actually denser than Earth and Mercury. In other words, this is a ridiculous uh, planet. Uh, it's just something that we didn't really expect to find here. But what's even more interesting about this particular object is that it's also very massive. It's more massive than our own Earth. So in other words, this is a planet that has extremely high density, but also is extremely massive compared to Earth. So even though its radius is only about 10% larger than Earth, so Earth would only be a little bit bigger than this, its uh, mass is about 2.6 or even 2.7 times more than Earth. And so, as you can probably imagine, trying to stand on this planet would be very, very challenging. Not only is it super hot, as a matter of fact, the temperature on this side is usually about 2,300 degrees Celsius, with the temperature on the other side maybe about 300 to 400 degrees um, colder, so still uh, over 1,800 degrees Celsius. Uh, you also have an extremely, extremely high gravitational attraction here. The surface gravity, if you basically stand on the surface, would be pretty much uh, almost as high as it is on Jupiter. It's approximately 1.9 G, which is of course almost twice as high as it is on Earth. Uh, so that's quite an extreme object. Now, I actually wanted to see if we can recreate this in Universe Sandbox and if we could actually see what we can maybe make out of it and what kind of temperature it gets and basically um, if it can also potentially have some sort of atmosphere and what that would do to a planet. 
So we're going to see if we can just go and create this object in Universe Sandbox. Um, and let's see what we can actually make. And so here we have the sort of a virtual simulation of the K229 system that I've just created in Universe Sandbox. We're going to uh, unpause it in a few seconds and just before we start. So this is what the planet would look like before I unpause it. So this is a world that's about 2.69 masses of Earth. It's about 7,500 kilometers in um, radius. This is what it looks like compared to Earth in size, but obviously the mass is much, much higher. And uh, just for fun, let's actually place Earth on the other side just to see how it fares in comparison to uh, this object. And lastly, um, what else do we have here? We also have the uh, distance, which is uh, the same major axis that is. Uh, the, the distance to its star is about uh 1.9 i guess million kilometers and right now the temperature is pretty low but i'm about to let this go and start orbiting around its star and you'll notice that it's just going to start heating up quite uh quickly and it's probably going to become ridiculously hot in just a few minutes and so what i wanted to see is first of all how hot it gets and one thing i may have not done yet is actually give it a tidal lock so this planet is almost certainly tidally locked as well meaning that it's going to be actually always facing with the same uh, side to its parent star all right so here we go uh, let's run this a little bit faster and look at that the planet is already smoking and now it's getting hotter and hotter so now it's glowing and basically this is probably what this world kind of looks like uh, essentially a glowing ball of lava but because it's metallic and also because it is oh and look at earth by the way earth did not do as well uh, as a matter of fact earth seems to have lost its atmosphere which is basically flying behind it but it's also a very similar glowing ball of lava but anyway that we're not here to talk about earth we're here to talk about k2 2 to 9 so um, this particular object as you can kind of see, um, is a little bit different from anything we have in our own solar system. But most importantly, it's probably also extremely, extremely uh, magnetic, mostly because of the amount of metal in it, and also because it spins relatively fast compared to Mercury, but also because of its mass and uh, the amount of heat is, that is generated through the interaction with the star. Now, that doesn't mean that uh, it would be habitable in any sense because the temperature here is just too extreme. But nevertheless, this would be an extremely interesting planet to study. Now, let's try to add some atmosphere here just to see if anything really happens. Now, let's start with one atmosphere similar to Earth. And, oh, look at that. It actually changed its color a little bit. Uh, and I think the atmosphere is actually still there. Oh, and I, I'm guessing it changed the color because the temperature went up. It now also has a little bit of greenhouse effect. So if there is any atmosphere here, and there actually might be based on all of the elements that might be evaporating from the planet and are basically kind of covering the um, area that would be considered to be atmosphere, it would most likely actually have uh, even higher temperature. But what's interesting is that you wouldn't expect it to be any kind of elements that we get on Earth. As a matter of fact, you would most likely expect this to be very unusual elements. So this might be atmosphere of metals. This might be even atmosphere uh, containing uh, rocky materials. And anything here would be totally different from what you'd expect on Earth. So you might actually have uh, a totally active uh, geology and it might even have volcanoes and mountains and um, a lot of actually motion on the surface, but all of it would be uh, based on the fact that it's all just mold molten materials and only some of the metals that have really, really high uh, melting point would actually survive and stay hard. The rest would probably uh, just melt or even evaporate and become a gas. Now there's Earth in the background. It's just past us. I was actually hoping that they would collide with each other, but they didn't. But basically, that's it. That's what we discovered. And this is probably one of the most dense exoplanets um, we've discovered so far. And also one of the most interesting and most unusual uh, planets that seems to be like a mega-sized Mercury. Well, anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. And hopefully now you know a little bit more about K2-229b. 
do check out uh, both the Universe Sandbox and NASA's Eyes, which is right here. And uh, consider supporting this channel on Patreon, subscribe, and share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.